Hi guys! Since I need a channel trailer and I'm not really too sure of what this channel is supposed to be. I think when I started making videos I didn't think about where I wanted to bring this channel to. So um, I've decided to do a reintroductory vlog because let's face it, my actual introductory vlog was just like 10 or so minutes of me rambling on about things you guys don't care about, mostly myself. So let's start over. I'm going to try to introduce myself this time by introducing 10 things you need to know about me and 10 of my favorite reads which I got right which I got right here so let's get started first things first my name is Bivi it's spelled B-I-V-I -I. Um, and if you can see in my channel I think it shows up when you go to my channel, that is my actual full name. It's not made up in any sense of the word. You can actually see it in my birth certificate. And I am an Indonesian, currently living in South Tangerang, just outside of Jakarta, uh, Indonesia. So it's not wrong if I say I live in Jakarta because I basically spent my whole life there anyway. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know where Indonesia is, get updated people. I'm just gonna put in a map over here to tell you where that is in the world. Since 2000, January 2011 until August last year, I lived in Germany. Specifically, three towns. Karlsruhe, Hallandersale, and Kassel. Um, that makes me living there for three years where I studied um, art history in Universite Kassel uh, and Consortium Kassel. It's a different system. It's just one school with two major departments, one for art and one for everything else. I speak a total of four languages, which you might have known from my introductory vlog. The first language being Indonesian, because hello, native language. Second language being English, because I'm speaking it right now. Third language being German because I lived in Germany for three years, studied in a university and everything, so it's kind of a must. I didn't live in Frankfurt or Berlin where people can speak English like in a daily basis. In Kassel, for example, a lot of people don't know English very well. I mean, the young people do, but old people don't necessarily need it. And the fourth language being Japanese. If you haven't watched any of my videos, you can watch this one where I did my Japanese voice main tag um, where I spoke Japanese throughout the whole video. Since January 2012, I have become a personal style blogger over at Alive as always. The link to the blog will be down below in the description box. Um, yeah, and uh, I hope you would come and say hi sometime because I would absolutely love that. And I'm also a freelance illustrator who is accepting commissions at the moment. You can see, uh, you can check out my portfolio at my Behance, which will also be um, linked to down below, and you can check out the commission details if you're interested. I would be very happy if you do that. I'm in a four and a half, almost five year long relationship with my boyfriend, who I call Firu, but that's not his real name, and I probably won't tell you his real name anyway. He appears a lot on the blog, so if you want to see what he looks like or our daily WW days, it's in the blog, and you can see it in the tag Firu and Fisha, if you want to. Firu lives in Germany right now in a town called Mühlheim, which is located not too far away from Dortmund. And 
he's studying IT security and I am missing him every day. I am an anime enthusiast. I love anime. I love watching them. I love reading manga and I love drawing them. And that is where my art style came from. But I'm trying to do, do stray away from that right now. Because as an illustrator, you don't get a lot of attention or you, people don't take it seriously if you do if you draw anime style and I want to be taken seriously. Now let's move into the books. And so there are 10 books in total and I want to go in a countdown so you can tell which book I love the most and which I still think is re really great but I don't know I just want to show the love in a very numerical order. <laughs> First off um, we have 24 Eyes by Sakai Tsuboi. Um, this is actually a Japanese book, but I read it in English version because I'm not very good at written Japanese language just yet. Um, it tells a very sad story in a post-war era, in the World War II era, about so. There's this school, uh, there's this class full of children who are very naughty and the teachers never stay for very long and that's where the, the teacher Miss Oishi or Oishi Sensei come and she, um, she could handle the children and she finally changed their lives and stayed and she's like, like the Nanny McPhee of the school. I guess. And you know how the World War II for the Japanese is, so get ready for some tears. Number 9. I don't have the book because I borrowed it from the library, but I will give you the cover right here. And The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. If you've been around the booktubing world, or maybe just around the literary world, you might already know this book. You might also have seen the movie. But I, for one, definitely prefer the book to the movie because the movie was... It's less... It gives out less emotion than the book. The book is told in a first-person narrative. So it's told from the perspective of a boy who lives in their neighborhood. The story is about four sisters, I think? Was it five or four sisters? I forgot. Okay. The title already kind of spoils it. It's about four sisters who kill themselves one by one using different methods at different times and freaking out everyone in the neighborhood. Mostly because they're always popular in a way that the guys cannot get to them, cannot understand what they're thinking, what's going on in their life, and their parents treat them overprotectively so they never uh, approve of them having boys around and stuff like that and one day they just kill themselves I know it's a little depressing but it's definitely a great coming of age story and I think you should read it number eight is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott Maybe a lot of you out there are like yeah a classic uh-huh not my thing but I do love this book a lot. It changed my life. It changed my perspective on love. My favorite character is Joe. <laughs> if you know, if you if you've read this book, and most of you probably have, that he she is like the greatest person in a book ever. If you don't know what the story is about, it's obviously about four uh, sisters who live with their mom when their father went out to war. Even though it's set in the war, it's not as it doesn't have a, a, such a huge impact in terms of society. It's more the normal story of four sisters handling each other. And if you have a sister, you will definitely relate to this book. It's actually it's, um, the first book of a series. It's actually two books in one, Little Women and Good Wives. But there's also Little Men and the last book I don't remember. But um, yeah. But in the first, in this book, it centers around the four sisters uh, and how they grew up and 
handle each other and stuff like that. In the last two books, it's centered around the children that they are raising um, as a part of a school or something. Yeah, but this book is really good. And I can't get enough of Joe and Lori. And no spoilers, but it changed my perspective on love. Number seven is Artemis Fall by e Eowyn Coffer. How, how do you say his name? Eowyn? Eowyn? Irish people, help me. I think it's Eowyn Coffer. And I love the first book especially because look, it's golden! It's golden. And it tells a story of this criminal 12-year-old named Artemis Fowl, the title. Artemis um, has a criminal father who went missing and a mother who couldn't remember him. And he was rich. He was stinking rich. And since his father went missing and his mother couldn't remember him, he's pretty much off the hook about everything. He doesn't really go to school anymore. He's a child genius, but he really doesn't have to. Um, but he's been doing crimes life, left and right and he wants everything he can get his hands on. And that's when he discovered the world of the fairies, basically. He met Captain Holy Short of the... It's actually pronounced L-E-P Recon Unit, but I like, I think it's a play word where you can just call it Leprechaun. And that's when his whole life changed, because these fairies, they do not back down, and they have high-tech facilities in their disposal. So Artemis is not his match. It's actually also a series. I think there's like seven books in total. I don't know if it's still going on. I haven't read the last book yet. But it's really amazing and it has um I don't know if you can see it like this. Um secret writing secret hieroglyphs at the bottom. My sister translated this one. Um I don't know where she got the translation from. But it's really, really fun to look at. It's also on the cover here. Nice. Number six is this ugly series by Scott Westerfeld. It's one of those series that I don't know why it hasn't been turned into a movie yet. Because it has everything. It has high-tech weaponry. It has battles and wars. It has teenage drama. Most importantly, it has dystopian... Um, Quality. It's set in the post-apocalyptic post world where all machines have somewhat died. There's no more cars, no more anything like that. And people's perspectives have changed. Um, in this world, when you're when you hit 16 years old, you will get um, plastic surgery to get a whole makeover. Your first 16 years of face will be identified as ugly. And then afterwards, you get surgery and you will be a pretty. And that's what the main character, Tally, wanted as well. She wanted to be a pretty as soon as possible. But then she met this girl called Shay. And Shay ran away the night before they had to get the surgery. And Shay introduced her to all this life outside of the city, um, this life of the runaways. And Tally saw that you don't have to get the surgery to be pretty and how, you know, that the society wasn't all that different from before after all, where people still compare each other, each other's body images and force their own idea of beauty on other people. Yeah, I think it's like there's three books in total and another book uh, as a spin-off, so I think it's a trilogy. It's really amazing. You you get to see the transformation from Tally, who wanted to be to just be a pretty girl when she's 16, to becoming someone who actually changes her whole society. Definitely a recommended. This is number five. Good Omen by my favorite Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I love Neil Gaiman's works. He is a genius when it comes to writing books and when it comes to using words. Um, Good Omens have two covers, by the way. I like, there's this one, this, this black one with an angel in the middle, and there's a red one with a devil in the middle. 
this is a, a hilarious I need to emphasize on the hilarity because it's a hilarious story about the apocalypse I know never happened before it tells the story of different groups of people some of them are not human beings most of them are human beings one is a Satan something or other one is an angel one is a demon there are four apocalyptic horse, horse persons and they all kind of prepare for the apocalypse sort of and somehow the story just keeps getting better and better I mean you would never think that they would make fun of the apocalypse but this book did it and I don't know why it's not more hyped up because it's the best number four we have Room by Emma Donoghue again as you can see I don't have this book I also borrowed from the library um, in Castle 2 so, but it's a book that's been on my to read list for a while when I finally read it it did not disappoint it's a story um, of a very scary situation told from the point of view of a five-year-old so it's not as scary as it should be um, I don't really want to spoil the book I don't know how to tell you the story without spoiling the book so the story tells of a five-year-old who lives with his mother but they don't live where you would think they live it's a word read and sometimes the per perspective of the five-year-old um, saves you from all the distress and the thrill of being an adult in that situation but it also stresses you out because this five-year-old doesn't understand the good change that's happening in his life because he's so um, used to the bad situation you know what I mean? yeah, well in number three we have The Princess and the Captain it's a French book actually by Anne Laurent Bondeau yeah um, the real, the original version is called La Princesse, La Princesse et le Captain and in, it tells a very epic story about a princess who ran away from her kingdom and then got kidnapped I think by a bandit and then there's Orpheus the man who was sent to bring the princess home because they thought she was kidnapped even though she just wanted to get away from her arranged marriage and one thing leads to another then they end up in a world far far away it's almost like the modern day French version of the Odyssey except that it has more romance and more um, epic battles the princess is not at all like, like a Disney princess where she's like all oh, glittery and oh I can't be dirty she's actually more like Zena, the warrior princess or Pocahontas she's like badass and I must say this is also like a tear jerking book it's also not a hyped up book I think I don't know why it's a really amazing book number two we have something that is so out of the ordinary you might not have read it or you might but I really love it first of all from the cover look at that beautiful cover I love the trees over here I love the, the huge title and the kids three over here it's at first I thought it was gonna be a romance novel and I'm not gonna lie the first time I wanted to buy it was because of the cover I don't know what the story was about but it turned into a really amazing story it's a story of a sister and a brother from when they were children until up until they're like adults um, and they're not like ordinary brother and sister not incest or anything just they're, they have a different mindset than most children and they're very close this title comes from when the sister gets a rabbit for a Christmas present or was it was a birthday present? I forgot but, but the brother said you should just name him God and she did and everyone thought that it was blasphemy but that's where the title comes from I think there's one lesson you need to keep from this book this, I'm just gonna leave you with this quote because the whole book will just talk about that mostly. You are here, but you are not mine. And it's 
I think, is the sincerest and purest form of love in any kind of relationship. You are here, but you're not mine. Finally, we go to the number one. Aren't you curious? It's gonna be on top of this pile. Well, we are gonna see number one. Number, the number one book is exactly the kind of love story that I love. Number one is Natural Flights of the Human Mind by Claire Morrall. I love Claire Morrall. I've read like three of her books and it's been amazing. And this book is about Peter Straker, a guy who lives in a lighthouse, not because he has to or, or he volunteered, but mostly because he wanted to get away from his secret where he killed like 78 people. So he killed 78 people in a plane crash a long time ago. And there's this immigrant who lives in a house and um, lost her husband, whether, whether by death or by abandonment. Um, yeah. And they met somehow, and at first they just, um, Straker didn't like talking and didn't open up, and Imiga liked talking a lot, and in the end they got to know each other, and finally Straker could manage, or could handle his 78 victims, who talk in his head a lot, thanks to his skill. It doesn't look like a love story at first, but in the end it turned into a love story, but it's definitely the kind of love that doesn't need expressing, it doesn't need words to express, and it's just a kind of pure, sincere, and cute love. Said in Scotland. So that is it for my top 10 re read. What do you think? Let me know what you think of these books, and what you think of this whole video, and um, overall, Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and leave a comment down below to let me know what you want me to talk about more and I will leave all the link down below to everything I just said and I hope you will tell me your top 10 read as well let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see from me check out my blog, check out my portfolio and um, all my social media will also be down below. Thanks for watching, thank you, and see you guys soon. Bye!